All right, let's see. The seven stories that prove Larry Bird was the greatest trash talker of all time. E yeah. uh. Number seven, he constantly insulted the people guarding him. If you want to get okay. into a player's head, there is no Ain't better way than to trash talk your opponent and then back it up. And Ain't that the way to trash talk? The king of trash talking it. his man and then backing it up. For instance, he once scored 40 points and had a triple double against a young Sean Kemp. Late in the okay. game, Kemp, who grew up in Indiana, attempted to defend a tough Larry Bird shot. Bird sunk the shot and running back up the court told Kemp, I'm the best effing player from Indiana. Indiana the <laughs> okay, that ain't bad. That ain't tough. Found himself matched up against Julius Irving and dominated him. As he scored point after point, Bird kept repeating two numbers to Dr. Oh Kemp, my God. The number of points Bird had and the number of points Irving had. By the end of the third quarter, those two numbers had become 42 and 6. 42, 42 to 6? Did he say that the whole time? Irving. At this point, Danny Ainge claims that Bird told Irving to retire, which led to this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yo, my man! The moment came in a game against the Pacers around Christmas. Before the game, a person known as the Rifleman told reporters that. If you make somebody like still off on you like that, you know you didn't got in their head. You didn't say something that hurt their feelings to the to the point that even came to blows like that. Golly, I, I forgot how. I forgot just how tough them damn 80s was, boy. Golly. He just came to blows repeatedly on his ass. Golly. That the rifleman is coming and he's going bird hunting. Hearing this, Larry approached person before tip off, saying, okay. Hey, Chuck, I have a present for you. He then waited until person was subbed out, spotted up right next to where he was sitting, and drained a three. As the ball mm -hmm. went in, Bird turned to person and said, Merry effin' Christmas. Number six. <laughs> okay. Trash talk coaches. Now, As okay, you're talking about the coaches. Trash Coach ain't even playing. It became too easy. So he began to trash talk coaches. Against the Bulls, Bird found himself matched up against Ben Porquette, a noticeably poor defender. He took <laughs> exception to this and yeah, expressed right. to then Bulls coach Doug Collins, Ben Porquette. Are you effing kidding me? <laughs> 33 points in the first half. Against the Pistons, a young Dennis Rodman tried his best to stop Bird, smothering him when he had the ball and trying to deny him when he Yeah, he won the best still, defenders of all Bird time, too. To get into Rodman's head, screaming at his teammates, I'm wide open, even as Rodman was attached to his hip and wow. acted as if he was wide open, too, sinking four straight shots in Rodman's face. Before wow. Asking Pistons coach Chuck Daly, who's guarding me, Chuck? Is anyone guarding me? That's terrible. Guarding, or I'm going to go for 60. And while scoring it. And see, when you say stuff like that, you ain't even talking to the player. It's like that get in the player head even more. Oh, my Still goodness. Okay. Jazz, Bird okay. sunk a shot and said. When he ran by the bench, he goes, that's a heat check. Before turning to jazz coach Frank Layden and saying. Hey, Frank, don't you have anybody on that bench who can guard me? To his credit, Layden responded with. Frank looked down the bench and goes. No. <laughs> no. Oh, see, now. Nah, see, now. Nah, see, I don't like that. I don't like that part. I don't care if I ain't got nobody to guard. I'm gonna get out there and guard. If I'm coach, I ain't just getting it up to you. Shoot, got Larry out here just doing whatever on my ass, and then we gonna say, oh, I ain't got nobody that can guard you. Man, th th throw the kitchen sink at him. Double team him, triple team him. I don't care. Somebody, you ain't gonna keep on beating me. You ain't gonna keep doing the same thing to me. Shoot, I ain't got one person that can guard you, but I got five people that can go out there and guard you. It's finna be five. I, anybody can score, just not you, lad. Shoot, that's how I would have played the F. If we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose like that. In the 1986 season, the NBA added the three point contest to its All Star weekend for the first time. Oh, I remember how just... game's deadliest shooters, Larry Bird, was of course chosen to compete. And while now many see the three point contest as a friendly competition, Bird saw it as just another way to prove his greatness. <laughs> event, see, I like that part. Practicing from the five spots he would be taking his shots, making sure he was at his best for the contest. While Bird was already supremely confident in his shot, this practice convinced him that there was no way. Way he could lose to anyone and he nice. made sure his opponents in the contest knew this we had a three-point contest at the all-star break and larry walks in and says i hope all you guys in here are thinking about second place because i'm winning this in other words he was did he, that first place was already locked did he do that every once, year as bird began his final round by draining 11 threes in a row he won the contest while still on the middle rack and even showboated by banking in the money ball from the right wing as he that's tough he raised his arms and yelled, 
I am the three-point king. And he won. <laughs> because the next year, Bird won the contest again. Throughout the entire shootout, he never removed his warm-up jacket, demonstrating his unwavering confidence. And oh again, my he goodness, yeah. Victory beforehand, telling Dale Ellis, there's no need to talk this time. We all know who's going to win. And That's terrible. In pursuit of his third three-point shootout championship in three tries, Bird, jacket on, sunk his final money ball to give him his third straight title and the official crown of the NBA's three-point king. Number four. Okay. Okay, but how many did he hit, though? Who was his record, though? How many points did he score? I feel like Hodges got the record, don't he? I got to look that one up. It, 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 it's not It's not even, a matter of fact, it's not even about how many threes that you actually hit. Because once you win the key to the competition, you you, you look in somebody face-to-face, -face, you know what I'm saying? Man-to-man, -man, it's like you got to score to beat. That pressure, when that pressure is up on you, it's a different type of thing, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, I can respect that. I mean, he ain't never lost, so I can respect okay. that. By all accounts, Larry Bird More than I can say about Steph. Steph, you out here losing. But he Lost me some money. Trying to bet on him in a three-point competition. Rookies. While recalling a game against Bird in his rookie season, Clyde Drexler summed up just what it was like for a rookie to be matched up against Larry Bird. I was watching in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. He goes, confident? You're, you're a rookie. You don't know anything. After that statement, Bird <laughs> began to rain in shot after shot over Clyde, ending mm -hmm. with... Coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> in his first game as a Hawk, Dominique Wilkins went to shake Bird's hand at the opening tip. These Bird goats, too. Wilkins stone-faced and ignored him. Later in the game, Wilkins knocked Bird to the floor on a drive to the basket. Goodness he gracious. He said, I like you, rookie. You've got guts. But I'm still going to go for 40 on you tonight. He was one point off of this promise. Ah. Scoring 39 on Dominique while shooting 18 for 22 from the floor. In a game against the Pacers, another notorious trash talker. Yeah, 40 is 40. Miller, attempted to get into Bird's head at the free throw line during his rookie year. Bird stopped, looked at Reggie, and said, Rook, I am the best effing shooter in the league. In the league. Understand? That was on Reggie You're Miller, too. Trying to F and tell me something? He then, of course, proceeded to sink his next free throw. And this trash talk did not only extend to rookies, it extended yeah. to college players, too. In Come on, you ain't gonna do the college players like that. What they do to you? The United States team led by Michael Jordan played against a team of current pros to practice. During the warm-ups, a ball bounced from the Olympic team's end to the pros end. Michael Jordan chased after it, and then... The ball happened to be picked up by Larry Bird. And Michael went up a few feet away from Larry Bird and held out his hands and Bird took the ball and fired it back down the court over Jordan's head as if to say you're not only not getting this ball I don't give a damn who you are number three <laughs> <stay true laughs> you, <laughs> you did that to Mike <laughs> you did that to young Mike hey you see they don't do that see that I think that's see okay okay they don't do that to people in the league no more man it's too nice in the league now, man. Them boys is too friendly these days. You ain't gonna, you just ain't gonna get that in the league these days, man. That's probably what made Mike come. Like, hey, man, come on, he got, he probably had dudes like that all through his whole, his whole basketball career through high school, college. Talking about you, a young boy, you ain't, you ain't finna, you know what I'm saying? Just coming here and they probably don't even haze, they don't even really haze like that no more, man. That's what's missing. That's why the league's soft now. Larry Bird earned the reputation as one of oh, the greatest those. clutch players in the NBA's history. Countless times the Celtics placed the ball in his hands and countless times he came through. As his mm -hmm. team, ML Carr said. Because you know if you ever got in trouble, give the ball to Larry and get out of his way. And <laughs> while just scoring in the clutch became too easy for Bird. Oh my god. That's I ridiculous. I'll tell someone on the opponents and team that I want to hit the last second shot and do it. So on December 3rd, that's tough as hell. In the final moments of a tie game against the Sox, oh, he's, that's like Freega out here. Huddled to the man guard. Oh, he's game point. McDaniel and said, Yeah, he said, I'm gonna get it right here. I'm gonna shoot it right in your face. And that's exactly what he did. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Mm, got him. <laughs> that little step back. <laughs> Won't nobody touch that. In fact, he not only shot the game winner over McDaniel, he also shot it over McDaniel's teammate too, proving that not even two players could stop Bird in the court. Hey, and send three at him. Don't let him touch season, it. Larry managed to top it. In the second game of the 1998 season, the Celtics trailed the Bullets by three with just seconds remaining. The ball was passed to Bird, who sunk a three to tie the game, but his coach had called a timeout. No matter, Bird proceeded to sink a <laughs> running three-pointer. Bro, that game. running one-legged three is just like overtime, ridiculous. With just two seconds remaining, the Celtics again trailed when... He looks at uh, the bench and says, uh, 
Hey guys, when I come back up to time, I'm gonna go right to the same spot. Same spot. He told Washington, I'm gonna get the ball. You can guess what happened next. And where do we go? It's gonna go to Bird. He's got a shot. Same shot. Number two. Oh my the god. The game was just too easy. As I said before, Larry Bird often found the game's most crucial moments to be too. Oh, this is left hand game. Stakes were even lower, such as an average regular season game. Bird had to find more difficult ways to keep himself motivated. For instance, according to Danny Ainge, Larry used to come in the locker rooms. He'd be getting his ankles taped, and he'd say, "You know, hey, ball boy, run in and go find the scoring record in this building." You know, he needed those kind of challenges. Now, perhaps <laughs> the most extreme example of this came on Valentine's Day in 1986. The Celtics had just finished a long road trip. So Larry decided to go out with a bang. And Larry told all of us players, and the media too, we were all standing around waiting to leave. He said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip. I'm going to play this one left hand. Left hand? At least three I need to go see that game. Yes, Larry Bird promised to score every point. Ain't the no way he played that whole game left handed. That's a couple buckets. Except for jump shots. Which is exactly what he did. With both teams aware of his intentions, Bird scored 22 points with just his left hand. Goodness gracious. With 47 total points, along with 14 rebounds, 11 assists, and the game-winning shot. And number one. That's tough as hell. On March 3rd, 1985, Larry Bird's teammate Kevin McHale broke the Celtics franchise scoring record by scoring 56 points in a game. However, he mm. took himself out of the game with just a few minutes remaining. Bird later told the media, he should have stayed in there. Should have got 60. The two had a friendly rivalry. And Larry could not believe that Mikhail would take himself out with such an obvious milestone in sight. So, because he was Larry Bird, he decided to go for it himself. Just nine days later, while matched up against the Hawks and Dominique Wilkins, Bird put on one of the greatest regular season performances in NBA history. As Doc Rivers put it, He was calling shots off the glass. Who's next? Where you want this one from? Uh, and he just made one after another. Yeah. So he, they talking about Bird like he damn near invented trash talking. Shot after shot. In the fourth quarter, he mm, found himself with 52 points and then made this. A shot so impressive that the players on the Hawks bench fell over in disbelief. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one. eventually cheer on Bird, a player on the opposing team. Then with 56 points and a chance to break Mikhail's record, Bird went over to the Hawks and said, He called it, uh, he said rainbow uh, trainer's lap. Meaning... That's where he would shoot it, from the trainer's lap. Bird proceeded to catch the ball and do this, sinking a shot before falling into the trainer's lap. Meanwhile, the <laughs> Hawks players high five each other, appreciating the He really called the that, though? The shot was waved off due to a foul, though Bird sunk both free throws and ended the game with 60 points on a buzzer beater, a Celtics franchise record that still stands. Ain't nobody get 60 on him? Come on, Tatum, you can get 60, right? Ain't nobody getting 60. Tatum gonna go get 60 this year. He got to. Come on now. Sheesh. Hey man, Bird was something different, bro. It's like he invented everything that like everything that I know about basketball today. Like all that. Like the 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 specific type of trash talk that he was doing. It's just on another level, man. It's just on another level, man. I fool with it.